Besides a tragedy like that, uh, no presidency is going to be immune from terror, and no presidency is going to ignore terror or, or look for something like that. No more than President Bush was responsible for 9-11. I don't hold President Obama ha responsible for what happened in Libya. All right. All right. And that's, uh, th those are sort of the takeaways on the highs and lows, but those are some of the, the topics that really got everybody talking here, Wolf. You got an intelligent group of uh, undecided voters in that focus group. Aaron, thanks very much. I should point out... Very uh, informed, Wolf. Yes, they are very yeah. informed. Thank, thank them for me, please, <laughs> uh, and for our viewers. Uh, by the way, uh, we did check the, for President Obama. Had, he had three low points uh, throughout this uh, debate. Uh, Mitt Romney, according to these uh, people in this focus group, had seven lows. Up next, Tom Foreman's keeping them honest with another reality check, this time about illegal immigration. And in just a few minutes, you'll be able to see an encore presentation of this historic debate in its entirety. Go to CNN's Tom Foreman. He has a reality check about what the candidate said uh, on the sensitive issue of fixing illegal immigration, Tom. Yeah, well, Republicans have been after the president for months saying that he's ignored this issue of illegal immigration. Listen to how Mitt Romney went after him tonight and how the president answered. Why did he fail to even promote legislation that would have provided an answer for those that want to come here legally and for those that are here illegally today? We put more Border Patrol on than any time in history, and the flow of undocumented workers across the border is actually lower than it's been in 40 years. The fundamental claim here is that the president promised comprehensive immigration reform and he produced no immigration reform. I want to look at the president's claim first, though, because it gets at something that Republicans have pushed beyond that. They've largely suggested that the president has not been interested in engaging this issue of illegal immigrants, and they point to things like this as evidence. These are numbers from the Department of Homeland Security from 2000 to 2011. And look what happened with immigration arrest. They were really quite high, 1.8% in 2000. Through the Bush years, they went a little bit up, a little bit down, generally down. But then look, you hit 2009, Barack Obama is in office, and they just go steadily, steadily down. Many Republicans want to point to that and say, look, this is evidence that he's pandering to the Latino vote. He doesn't want to be tough on illegal immigrants. But there's more to the picture. Look at this over here. This is what's happening to the people who are being arrested. This is the record of deportations from 2000 up until 2011. And look, they were quite low, but under Barack Obama, they have steadily risen. When you get to his time here, look, that was rising under George Bush. Here it is, 2009. This is the highest level that we've ever seen under any president in terms of deportations. Barack Obama embraced the policies of George Bush when it came to the border. He's increased funding for the border, more guards, more motion detectors and cameras, more drones and airplanes and helicopters, so much so that when you combine it with the economic changes that have made a lot of jobs here dry up, the Pew Hispanic Center says now we have a net illegal immigration in this country of about zero. So Barack Obama can properly say he has engaged the issue of illegal immigration on the more narrow count, what Mitt Romney said about producing immigration reform he is absolutely right on this. Barack Obama did promise he would have comprehensive immigration reform. He did not produce it. They did try to do something on the DREAM Act. He took some administrative action to try to help the children of people who are here illegally. But he did not produce legislation, although he says if he can be reelected, he will try it in his second term. Wolf. Good point. Uh, thanks for the thanks very much for Tom. Let's go back to Anderson. Yeah, we're about nine minutes away from replaying uh, the uh, the debate for you. So let's just talk uh, over what we learned tonight. Uh, what tomorrow, what the headlines are going to be, Van? Sure. Well, I mean, I think we're trying to make sense of this polling data that shows he won the debate, but then on key points, you know, the economy, Romney scored better. I think you can make sense of it. People vote for people, not plans. And the last time we saw Romney, he was able to be the best storyteller on the stage. He talked about his values first. Then he laid out the plan. This time, Romney was a, more the list guy. He, he was thrown off by Obama. Obama was therefore able to go on the attack and yet stay likable. And I think that people will vote for the person, not the plan. So you even think, even though he's uh, Romney is scoring higher on the economy, think, yeah, on, 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 on deficits, all the plan taxes. stuff. But, but, but look, look at Obama. Obama looks like a winner. He's happy. You look at Romney. He looks shaken. I think people will vote for the person, Obama, Alex, not the plan. Ari, do you buy that? No. <laughs> no, no, the people or the plan. Um, no, it's always a mix. People vote on the basis of two things. They vote on the basis of somebody's ideology and their persona. Do I trust them? Do I like them? And you put the mix together, that drives a voter behavior. 
I still think when you look at the whole trend of what's happened since the first debate, the trend is still going in Mitt Romney's direction. The president, if he had a good night tonight, it's because he got no hit the last time, so he gets a couple hits tonight, and everybody said, look at him hit. Well, he still doesn't do very well when you add up both games. So you think the people That's are saying he won or saying he won in relation to how badly he did the first yeah. time? I think when you look at the president's first debate, this debate, he clearly had a much better debate, and so people have a nice aura about that for those who watch two debates. When you go into the voting booth, though, on the economy, on taxes, on deficit, on jobs, the issues that drive, it's hard to look at CNN's data, and so this is anything but a bad night for the president. Uh, but, but, I think I it, it clearly the consensus is this was, was, this was a very good night for the president. It may not have been as good a night for him as it was for Mitt Romney. But we, we've now had two debates. The weakest moments in Romney's performance tonight were around foreign policy. We go to debate number three next week, and it's all about foreign policy. So I think you've got to look at whether it's just a split decision at this point. I think this week belongs to the president, and we'll see what happens in a forum but, that favors the president. But if the next debate is on foreign policy, does that allow President Obama to make any more inroads on the economy? Well, it's certain, you know, Governor Romney had a misstep on this Libya question because of specifically what he said. I think on the bigger picture, there are a lot of questions for the administration on the Libya question. I think Governor Rom the benefit for Governor Romney here is that that's going to come back up and he's going to have a chance to get a redo and to re try to relitigate the issue. But also, look, it's a debate about foreign policy. Look for both of them to talk about how important a strong economy is and to a strong America in the world, how, how a confrontation with China and foreign policy is about the economy. I just want to get to the point that, look, I think this was a better night for the president. Uh, I think the net after two debates is that you have to say Romney still has the plus of the two debates. And here's, we've been talking about our poll, uh, the, the focus group being conducted by Democratic and Republicans about Walmart moms, moms who, suburban moms, mm -hmm. the people who decide the election. Uh, showed an advantage for the president. Romney struck some as off-putting, but Romney nonetheless scored points for having a five-point plan. Moms still want to see the president make a case for the second term. So to Van's point, and at the end, Obama wins more in the dial. In the end, most moms say the debate was a draw. If people think you have a plan, likability comes into play. The president has still left a whole lot of people. As I've been traveling the last few well, weeks, this is what people say. I want to vote for him, but he hasn't told me what he's going to do. Obama, Obama proved tonight. Obama conceded that Mitt Romney had a plan for change because he kept attacking it all night long. Now, the debate is now whether Romney's plan is a good plan for change or a bad plan for change. But nevertheless, that's 60 percent of Americans think this country's on the wrong track. Guess what the they want? The argument the president made, though, was that Romney wants to go backward. Do you want to go backward or do you want to go forward? Yes. And but Romney the made the case that we're not going to settle to for forward. where we are. <laughs> Two. Okay, you want to go forward. It's a work in progress. We've only got about 30 seconds left, yeah. David. Two weeks ago, the president had, was, was solidly ahead. He was moving toward a big victory. The first debate changed the arc of this, put Romney back in contention, started momentum. I think tonight slowed his momentum way down. I think we're in a real horse race down Let's the Let's take a look minutes. at those poll numbers again, Wolf. Thanks, Anderson. Uh, recapping the headline from our poll of registered voters who watched this second presidential debate. 46% say President Obama won tonight, compared to 39% who say Governor Romney won tonight. A reminder to you uh, about the breakdown of our sample. One-third of those we surveyed were Democratic, one-third were Republican. But that sample, somewhat more Republican than you'd find in the general public. We'd also like uh, uh, to know uh, what uh, struck you the most about tonight's debate. Go to CNN.com slash Facebook to post your comment. We're interested. We're going to show you some of the comments. Look at the top debate issues trending on Facebook. We took a concerted effort to go out and find women who had backgrounds that could be qualified to become members of our cabinet. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. The candidates are generating plenty of buzz tonight online. You just heard Mitt Romney talking about his efforts to recruit women when he was governor of Massachusetts. His term, a binders full of women, became a social media sensation. On Facebook, use of the phrase, a binders of women, skyrocketed. As for other words used in the debate, gangbangers went up, sketchy went up, self-deportation went up. Mitt Romney was mentioned almost 13% more than Barack Obama. The terms mentioned the most on Facebook are Romney, Obama, women, and, get this, Candy Crowley. Did you, did you say gangbangers? I did. I it's the know. first for everything. I know. That was mentioned. All right, yeah, Just sure it was. Just the news. <laughs> next presidential debate uh, next Monday in Florida. Here's the debate right now on car presentation.